Hello everyone, welcome to this session for Mother Summit on Power Analytics, so how to combine Power BI and Google Analytics. I'm pleased to make this session. I'm Clément Sirvant, I'm Expertise and Innovation Manager at 55, specifically in charge of analytics and data visualization expertise. Uh, I'm a certified Power BI expert and, and GA4 specialist. Uh, and I also give some courses uh, on data at Sorbonne University. So uh, about 55, it's a data company, a consulting group, part of Brontech Group uh, with a variety of uh, service on data strategy, cloud services, media consulting, customer experience. Uh, during this 30 minutes, we will cover why you should adopt Power BI and combine it with GA4. Uh, we, we will take some time and I'm happy for that to kickstart a quick project and show you a demo and I finish with uh, how to go further with your analytics project with Power BI. Um, first, why Power BI? Um, so I'm sure you are used uh, maybe another uh, solution like Looker Studio for dashboarding. Uh, it's, it's a great tool and maybe it's a default tool for analysts uh, using Google Analytics. Uh, but I think we, we should focus on leveraging tools that are used and uh, promoted inside each uh, enterprise. So you, you may have a Power BI used in your company and, and you should adopt it as a standard tool. Uh, it, it's really a great tool with advanced capabilities on visualizations. Plus, you will benefit from the Azure Cloud from Microsoft and uh, some uh, also advanced capabilities of Microsoft Fabric that is the ecosystem around uh, Power BI. Uh, so Power BI is one of the tools of this uh, analytics uh, and business intelligence suites. Uh, and the bonus would be the ability to embed uh, your dashboard and your report in Power BI in a PowerPoint, I mean. So that's, that's some uh, additional nice to have feature. Some uh, Power BI benefit, I would say I would highlight that uh, Power BI has a native connector for GA4, so it's really easy to set up. I will show you right away. Um, second point is about speed. Um, in some cases, Looker Studio report can be slow because you need to connect every time and load data from GA4 API. Whereas with Power BI, we store data once every day, it's refreshed, and uh, that said, uh, it allows users to um, have this data up to date uh, and connect uh, to the dashboard instantly. Uh, third point is about Power Query. Power Query is a powerful tool to prepare your data and give you the ability to join multiple data sources like Salesforce, like Meta. So it could be a great, uh, great tool to go merge data beyond just uh, Google Analytics. Uh, final word on how um, yeah, Power BI allow you to make advanced data visualization and analytics. We will demo uh, what AI visual uh, let you do. And, uh, and of course, you may have heard about Microsoft Copilot. Uh, that's, that is interesting feature as well. So let's start with uh, the demo. Um, <clears throat> In fact, I have two demos. Uh, the first one is about um, how to kickstart a project with the Marketplace app. So it's a pre-built report that I made that I want to share today. And the second point is about creating your own dashboard. So I will show you how to uh, connect to GA4 uh, in Power BI. So first, let's uh, start with this uh, report uh, that I shared. It's free, so go ahead and try it. Uh, I will just show you how you can do it right away. And I'm not getting it's fast. So you just go to AppSource. 
So it's a marketplace by by uh, Microsoft where you can find many other template apps. Uh, and just click on Get It Now. It will load. So you here you are uh, on Power BI service. So it's the online uh, platform where you can share reports with your colleagues. Um, so here I've al already the app, but you can uh, create a work page dedicated to this demo. Uh, so demo audience report, for example, and install, install it. So it will take some time, but you know, quite fast and you get ready with a pre-made report made by 55. So I'm happy to share it, uh, it's free, go ahead and uh, you can connect to your data. Uh, so that is 55 data, but just go and select the date, one from start, one end. Um, just add also the account ID of Google Analytics, the property ID. Uh, that's that's quite easy. Just go here on analytics.com and just here on the admin section, you you will find uh, all what you need. So here you are. You, you, are, you have this uh, admin panel where you can see the account detail, property detail, with the, where you will find the IDs. So that's it for, for this first demo. And now I will jump on the second part of the demo, how to create your own report with Power BI. So this is a four step workflow. First step is to connect to data. In this demo, I will use a native Power BI connector to GA4, but just I wanted to let you know that you can also use third-party connector like Supermetrics, Funnel, Windsor AI inside Power BI. Um, it could be useful if you would like to connect to many um, other data sources, uh, especially media data sources like TikTok, like uh, Instagram Extra. Um, and those those tools are quite specialized on it, so we, we, we can recommend those in such use case. Um, the third uh, option to connect to uh, your Google Analytics data is to use the Google BigQuery connector. And I'm sure that for advanced use case or for scale, to scale your analytics project, that would be a great way to leverage all the raw data. Um, the second step of, of this workflow is to model the data. I will show you how you can add a date table and how you should select your dimension and metrics. Uh, third step is to build the report. So I will quickly draw something for you and share the report on Power BI service. So that's it. Let's jump into it. And um, just to say that Microsoft Power BI is only available on PC, uh, but yeah. That's the only drawback. So let's start with this demo. Uh, I made a numpty dashboard. Uh, it's not just a, a, a canvas, some, some uh, background image uh, to quick start the project. But yeah, you can start from scratch if, if you want. Uh, there is no data, as you see on the data model. Everything is empty. So the first step is to connect to data. You will select Google Analytics here. Here you are. So it might prompt you to connect to uh, your Google Analytics account. Tube.o uh, connector is for GA4. So choose 2.0. So it's loading. 
and here we are. So I'm already connected, but it might prompt you in your case uh, with to logging with Google Analytics. I will just connect to and here choose the GA4 property of uh, 55 websites. Here you have multiple uh, metrics with this icon and on, on the bottom you have also dimensions. So you have a full list of every dimension and metrics that you can get with G4 API. Um, for this uh, example, I will uh, keep it simple. I will take the date. I will also take device category. I will not choose default channel group here because I want the session default channel group on a session scope. That's, that's quite important as well um, to fit what we have in the interface. Uh, so sessions, default channel group, here we have it. So that's it for dimensions. And now we need some metrics. Um, so I will go uh, and select sessions, total users, uh, maybe new users, you can select, you know, uh, in our case, we have generately don't know websites, events, uh, okay? So that's it for this demo. I, I make it quick. So you may connect and have this table. Instead of loading the data right away, we click on transform data. Why is because uh, you need to uh, met a bit of uh, configuration here with Power Query. Power Query is a data, data preparation tool of Power BI. Why we need it is because by default, GA4 will load all your historical data. So it will query a lot of time. It will get maybe too much time to query all, all this data. So what we want to do here is to add a date filter. Um, so just to, to start with, you need to create uh, and create uh, parameters. So I already create some, but you, you can create a new one uh, for, for your project. You, you need two parameters, a one start and one end parameters with those uh, value that you can choose the date range. Uh, it's important to be date time. Uh, those, those parameters are useful to limit uh, the, the data that is imported by the API, but also they will be useful to uh, automate the scheduling uh, and the refresh scheduling of, uh, of your data uh, in Power BI service. So that's really uh, something you should do if you want fresh data. Uh, once it's done, just go to your table and you will need to apply filter. To apply this filter, you will need to change first the data format to match it with the date format of the parameters. Once it's done, you will also need to apply a filter. So go here and date time filters, choose custom. You are. So is after or equal, just select the parameter we really created, which one start. And you also need an is before and equal to a parameter range and here we are so it will filter and we get only data from her date range once it's done you can close and apply it and you will we will load the data of course it takes a bit of time not too much but yeah be patient Here we are. So we are happy with our table on the data pane. Here you have all the fields that you requested. And you can see on the left, on the table view, you have your table that is displayed, your full table. You also have your data models that is now populated with one table. So we are good. Um, 
So we need some modeling, data modeling step here uh, to add. We, we need, and that's quite important in Power BI to make date calculations. Um, and yeah, uh, we need to add a calendar table, uh, a date table. So for this, I will just use a tool that allow me to quickly create this table. Made. So it's called Bravo for Power BI. You can find it, it's free online. Uh, so for that, I will just attach it to my empty dashboard. Here, I will click on manage date. Here, so you have a few options here if you want to choose, but you can review it yourself. I will keep the default one and oh, Okay, apply change. Done. Here we are. So thanks to Bravo for Power BI, we now have a date uh, table that can be linked to a fact table. You see? So that's, you, you may have heard about this concept of star schema, uh, and that's the way Power BI work. We link table related together. Uh, so we have the date field here and the date field here. The advantage of having this calendar table is, as you see, you have uh, so, some detail view of um, some uh, pre-made calendar um, dimensions that will be useful for us. The other thing that you can do for your star schema is, is to create a dedicated table for device criteria or session default generate group. That, that's, to be honest, very optional. Um, so I won't bother if, you, if, if I were you, if it's just a quick start, but I will show you uh, quickly how to make it. Um, on transform data here, I will jump back to Power Query to create my dimension table. I will create a reference table here and do uh, this dimension uh, table about a device category. So I will remove all other columns. Uh, remove other current here. I will also remove duplicate. And here you see we have a table for device category. Device category. So it may load faster, especially on big data set if you have such a table, if you have this proper star schema. Here we are. So we have a tiny star schema. Now we are good to start the report phase. In our dashboard, we will add first, maybe just a visualization of sessions by date. You can create it right away. Okay. We can also create um, the so default channel group and sessions. So for that, you have this bar chart. You can put it below. We can also create a donut chart uh, for device. Uh, so device category. So here we can use our device category. Uh, table and sessions. And to finish, we may, we may use uh, some KPI here. So you have a KPI card uh, if you want uh, here, or you have this just uh, card about numbers. And I will add some of it. 
that's the number of sessions. Uh, of course, you, you can make uh, comparisons if you want. It, it takes a bit more time, so I, I won't do it for, for the demo. Uh, so total user here. Okay. So that's pretty amazing what we can do. Uh, we can add also a slicer and slicer by date. So yeah, I, I like to remove what's unnecessary. And here we are. Uh, if you want to customize here how it displays, you you can. Uh, that's really how you want, and uh, you, you can uh, turn off some category label, add a title, uh, if it's clearer for you. So I may use here sessions and turn off uh, some category label that is now not necessary. Well, as you as you wish. That's that's for the demo we built of report. Now I wanted to share also what's AI visuals um, and how it can be useful. Uh, for that, uh, you, you we can do it here in the pane of my dashboard. We can add a forecast. You see. You will get the forecasted uh, few days. Uh, we can also add anomaly. Uh, so he well, well detected that we, we had a surge of traffic on, on September 17th because of an event. Uh, so that's it. I can show you also on the pre-made uh, report that I built for, for the, the purpose of, the, of this demo is you can get also um, an analyze uh, that will get uh, explain you why your traffic evolving from uh, time to time. Uh, so th that's the power of AI by Microsoft. So you see that it's quite impressive on each uh, traffic source, how each traffic source contributes to your success. So that's also available uh, on how to analyze the distribution of your data here. Uh, I think, yeah, uh, on every uh, graph, you may have this analyze uh, options. What I wanted to show for AI visual as well is, um, so that's, that's the contribution tree that could be interesting to analyze and get detailed view of your traffic for each of your desktop, but for each of your device category, for each of your channel. It's clear, get a, it gives a clear view. And it also, here this key influencer uh, graph give you an, some uh, insight about how, what influence, uh, in our case, the number of leads um, so that's quite interesting. Uh, I just recommend you to try by yourself what, what can, how it can be uh, efficient. So that's it for the demo. I will jump back to the presentation with a few words. How to go further. So I really, uh, um, think Google BigQuery is a way to go for advanced use cases, uh, especially because it allows you to bypass the GA4 API. Um, and you, you have some limitation in the API. You, you can't put more than eight dimensions. Um, so in some cases, uh, it may be a, a limit for, for big uh, needs. Uh, you also have some cardinality issues in J4 with other roles that can appear. You can have also, uh, thanks to BigQuery, you can bypass uh, the, um, uh, and have real-time data or get this uh, daily uh, fresh data set 
that is available. So that can be uh, powerful for to have really focus on fresh real-time data. And you can get also more granular data and make analysis by user IDs uh, that won't be possible with, with uh, the API. Of course, it comes with a cost. Uh, it requires far more preparation of data. Uh, so that's just for uh, advanced use cases. Uh, I show you what's about AI visual. Um, I wanted also to mention that there is a Q&A visual that is quite useful uh, to embed a new report and let user ask questions about your data set. So that's quite interesting. Uh, as for Microsoft Copilot, I, I saw some demo and use it. So it's really the capacity to generate reports that strike me. Um, of course, it would be simple report, uh, but it's quite uh, good enough for 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 a start uh, a starter project. Um, it also also allow you to generate DAX query in natural language, so that can be quite a helpful uh, assistance in some case. Uh, and for users, for end users, uh, it also beneficial for understanding better what's going in this dashboard and having a summary of uh, the insights. The drawback here is mostly the uh, dedicated license. It comes with a cost. Uh, so yeah, you, you may not have it uh, already by default in Power BI. I have a few words on why to contact us is just uh, if you want to quick start your project and benefit from 55 methodology and expertise, we use Power BI with various clients in retail, luxury, industry. Um, so that's some uh, good uh, uh, ways to reproduce what we have done. We I also give some uh, Power BI trainings. Uh, so if you want to get the train, trained by a certified Power BI specialist, go ahead and contact us. Uh, we may uh, do a dedicated sessions for you on and quick start your project. So it can be a really, uh, yeah, and home. Thank you for uh, attending these sessions. Uh, and I would be pleased to do another one next year. Bye-bye.